y'all, it's Melissa. I write the blog Melly Sews and I design blank slate patterns. And today I've got this cute little bunny project for you. It's got floppy ears, a little fuzzy tail, and it's actually super simple to make. I've got a link in the um, notes up here if you can see them, and it's also in the description below, that has a free pattern to make this bunny. So go ahead, go download that pattern and cut out your pieces, and then I'll meet you back here at the camera to see how to make this. So here are the supplies we'll be using. I've used the pattern and I have printed out and cut out my pattern pieces. I've got two of the front and back pieces, I've got eight of the arm and leg pieces, one of the little tummy piece, and four of the ear pieces, two of each color. I'm also using some yarn, um, a fork, you'll see what we get to use this for, and then I've also got black and white embroidery thread. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is embroider on the front of the um, bunny to put their face on and that's going to look like this. So I've got the bunny there and um, I've gone ahead and just used a satin stitch to do the eyes and the nose. I do have a link to a video and it's down in the description and it's also up here about how to do a satin stitch embroidery. So we're going to skip over how you do that and we're going to go ahead and go on to the next step which is creating the tail and that's where we're going to use this fork. So I'm grabbing the fork and the yarn and what I want to do is I'm going to start wrapping the yarn around my fork here. So I'm just holding out a tail and I'm going to start wrapping. I'm not wrapping extremely loose, but I'm not trying to go extra tight or anything either. And I'm not really counting wraps. I just continue to wrap um, until it looks like I've got a bunch of yarn there and a wad. So, I don't know, maybe about this much yarn. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip that end. Then I've got my needle threaded with the white embroidery thread and I'm going to use that. I'm going to go around the tines of the fork here and in between the middle and I am going to tie this off. And I want to get it as tight as I can. Sometimes it helps if you've got someone with an extra finger here so that you can have them help you hold in the center of the knot there. But if you can't get it super tight, what you can do after you get one knot kind of holding it in place is just flip it over the back side and tie it again. And that'll help tighten even more than that first knot. Oops, and there, I just broke that knot off. Um, happens to you, what you can do is you can also wrap the thread around a couple times and then kind of go under, stitch it through. So I've got, it sort of looks like a little bow here made out of yarn and I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to just clip through all those yarn loops. And what that's going to do is that's going to create my little fluffy bunny tail. And then I'll do that on the other side too. And you may have to do this in a couple of layers. It may take you more than one layer to get it done. See like I've got another layer of loops here that I need to clip through. But once you have all your loops clipped, you fluff it out. Um, and if there are any like there are extra long loops over there, you can trim those back to make this all fit within the tail. I've still got my embroidery thread attached and that is important because now what I want to do is take the back of my bunny and I'm going to stitch so that the tail is right in the center of the back. So I'm putting that on and then I just use my embroidery thread to go right through where I want the tail to end up. There we go. And there's a little bunny tail 
and on the back side I am going to just stitch through the fabric a couple times to make sure this is nice and secure and then I will tie, tie a knot. So after I take a few stitches just pass my needle through the loop a couple times and pull tight and then I will do that again just to make sure that I've got it sewn on well. There we go. So there's a bunny tail. Once you have the tail sewn onto the back and you have the face sewn onto the front, the next step is actually going to be to sew on the detail for the bunny's belly here. So what you want to do with that is you want to take your belly piece and you want to go ahead and stitch 3 eighths inch away from the edge of the belly piece. That is going to give you a stable edge to then go over to the iron and you're going to press up with the iron all along the edge where you stitched. What that's going to do, that's going to hide your raw edges and when it's done, it'll look like this. So I've pressed this nice and flat and then I went ahead and I removed the basting stitch. And now I can go ahead and stick that in the center of my bunny on the front. And I'm just going to use one pin to kind of hold that in place. And I'm going to stitch around these edges. At the same time, I am going to um, add the ears and the feet. So to do the ears, ah, here we go. You want to place two ears right sides together. And so I'm using a pink side and a blue side. You can use the same color, different colors, whatever you want. So you're going to place these right sides together. You're going to stitch three eighths inch from the edge all around, and then you're going to trim that edge. And you might even need to clip into the curves. So what that looks like when it's finished, here's one that's finished. I've stitched and then I trimmed that seam down so that it's only a quarter inch wide and now I also clipped into the curves. That's going to allow you to then turn this right side out and then you press it at the ironing board so that you have a little right side out ear. And the process is the same for the little hands and feet for the bunny as well. You're just going to take two of those, you place them right sides together, you stitch and you turn them right side out and then you press at the ironing board. So here's how I turn the ear right side out. And at the very end there you can use a point turning tool um, the eraser end of a pencil works well if you don't have a specific point turning tool to get that ear turned all the way right side out. So here's what the ears look like once I have them turned and pressed. So I've got my two ears here. And then here are what the hands and feet look like. Whoops. Here are what the hands and feet look like once I've got them turned and pressed too. So at the same time that I am stitching on the belly, I am going to go ahead and stitch on the ears. So the ears, you can see they kind of line up with the angle on the top of the bunny's head. And you want to, I'm going to baste those in place after I pin them. And you just kind of want to make sure that they're sitting evenly on the bunny's head. And then um, I actually like to pin them into the middle too and that makes sure that nothing but the tops of the ears is going to get caught in my seam when I stitch around. So just kind of get that out of the way and pin them all into the middle. Then um, the bunny arms, they'll actually be this way but we want to sew them this way. So I'm just going to put them I'm going to make sure they look about even there and put them here, make sure everything looks about even and then I will pin all of that in place. A 
Okay, so now I have a bunch of stitching to do. I'm going to use a regular stitch to stitch on the belly and I'll move these ear flaps, or sorry, the um, hand and feet out of the way because I don't want those stitched down. But I'm gonna go ahead and stitch around the edges of the belly. I'm gonna base the ears, the hands, and the feet all in place. Let me go ahead and do that and then we'll return to the camera to show you about the next step. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I stitched on the bunny's belly there and I based it on right along the edge, the little arms and feet and the ears. I've left my extra ears pinned together in the middle so that it doesn't get in the way. And since we've got the back with the tail sewn on already, all we need to do is place these two pieces right sides together and the tail is going to make this a teeny bit difficult so you want to make sure to use some pins around the edges but we are going to go ahead and stitch the front to the back around the edges make sure that you're not catching any extra ear besides the very top part of the ear that you basted you want to make sure that you're not catching anything else in the seam allowance so go ahead and pin your bunny front and back together. At the bottom, we're going to be leaving the space in between the legs open for turning. So you don't need to stitch past there. So it's a good idea to just line up the legs on the raw edges and just remember that you won't stitch in between them. Okay, so I'm going to take this to the machine. I'm going to start stitching at one leg go all the way around, stop with my needle down here to turn, and go all the way around, same thing here, stop to turn, and all the way around back to the side of the other leg, and then I will stop with that open. Let's remove the pins and I am going to um, clip into the corners of the neckline here. To make sure that we're able to turn that. So what you want to do is clip close to the stitching line but not through it. Um, so you want to, after you've clipped those curves, go ahead and trim your seam allowances down. to about a quarter inch before you turn this. Make sure you leave the 3 8 seam allowance at the opening. Don't trim that off because you'll want that for the last step to finish. Okay, so turn your rabbit right side out. All right, once we've got our bunny to this step, the next step is to start stuffing it. So I'm just using polyester fiber fill, and you're going to push it into the bunny. Use small pieces and push them in, and if you get stuck, um, especially with trying to get the pieces up into the neckline, um, the back end of a pencil, the eraser end, or um, a knitting needle, the back end of it, works well to help poke that stuffing in there. Let me go ahead and get this stuffed and then we'll show you how to close up that opening and be finished with your bunny. Okay, so we've gone ahead and I've got the bunny all stuffed. It's almost finished. We just need to sew up this hole that we left for turning. So um, I'm going to, I've got just a regular hand sewing needle threaded with regular thread and we're going to do something here called a ladder stitch. It's also called a blind stitch. So let me get in here where I can see what I'm doing. Um, you want to first pull up and hide your knot on the inside. Then we are going to stuff that stuffing in. And I'm going to add a couple pins here to help hold this together. And I'm pinning parallel there. 
Okay. This is hard to do with, the, with it way out in front of me where the camera can see it. So those were some extra threads from when it was stitched on the machine. What I want to do is I want to insert the needle in the fold parallel to the opening I'm closing and then directly across in the other fold. Again, I'm going parallel with the needle. There we go. Make sure you don't get the foot caught in there. And right along that fold, parallel with the needle, and then right along the fold, parallel with the needle again. Um, this is what it looks like once you finish. You just keep doing those parallel stitches. And once you pull it tight and then knot it next to one leg, you can go ahead and cut the thread and you'll see how um, it created kind of a ladder of stitches. And when you pull them, it pulls the two seams together but also hides the stitches within the seam of the bunny. So. There you go, we've got a cute little floppy-eared bunny. This is a perfect gift, perfect for Easter or any other time.